start in a moment. Hello, dear friends. Welcome here at Card That Creator. We are live here today. It's always a blessing and an honor to be with you. If I haven't met you before, my name is Shane Martin. I'm broadcasting live from Richmond, Virginia. And this is always a humbling moment. It's always an honor to be here with you to discuss different articles from the Spiritist Magazine. And I'm also live here with my friends at the Spirit Society of Richmond Facebook page. So let me know how things are going. I hope you're doing well. So to kickstart our night today at 8 p.m., I'm going to read to you a message from the book Happy Life by Joana de Angelis Fru, the medium, Divaldo Franco. And the message is 43. Happiness is possible for you. Believe it is and strive to achieve it. Don't put your happiness in people, places, or things so as not to be disappointed. Happiness is an inner state resulting from a well-being that leading a dignified and serene life provides. Even in the absence of money, social standing, and health, Happiness is possible if you practice resignation and put your trust in God. Isn't that beautiful? This is a message from Joana de Angelis. And I can see some of you live. Thank you so much for joining me. We are live at Card Deck Radio and at the Spiritus Magazine, Facebook, and YouTube channels. We are everywhere and anywhere we can be, right? I see some of you live with me in Richmond as well. Welcome. So to kickstart the day, have a little bit of water with you so we can pray and it can be magnetized by the spirits. They can infuse good molecules for us, for our health, spiritual, emotional, and psychological health. And I'm going to invite you to start tonight program with a prayer. All right. If you are if it's safe to do so, hello, Anna. Hello, Paolo. What a blessing to see you. I miss you guys so very much there in Northern Virginia. Physically distanced, spiritually connected. That's what Kardec Creator is here to do, right? To nourish our souls. I'll put this aside. I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Close your eyes if it's safe for you to do so. And repeat the words of the prayer mentally, shall we? Dear Mother, Father God, thank you for all the blessings that we have, all the visible and invisible hands that accompany us, removing the obstacles, inspiring our actions. We thank the good spirits that are always by our side, guiding us during this lifetime. We thank you, dear God, for the beauty that surrounds us, for the blessings of this reincarnation on planet Earth today. Tonight, we dedicate our studies and prayers to those who are suffering, to our spiritual and physical companions on the Earth, one humankind, yearning for your presence. May your love and your light reach all areas of suffering in all realms of life, in all places of this earth and beyond. May the good spirits help us achieve more harmony and tranquility in our lives. We pray for those who are sick, who are in hospitals, for those who work, for those who are in orphanages, for those who are homeless, for those who are with their families yet experiencing any difficulties. May all of us today and always feel your presence and your love surrounding us. Give us the strength to undergo the vicissitudes of our lives. We ask you for protection. We ask you for inspiration and guidance as we begin our study today. And so be it. Dear friends, what a blessing to be here with you. I am able to see some of you live. Feel free to write a comment or question or anything. Remember, you can always access the Spiritus Magazine by going to spiritusmagazine.org. And today, it's just going to be you and I. 
I'm actually going to be reading from the app. And did you know you can go to your app store for Apple devices and for Android devices? In this case, I have my, my iPad here, and that's where I'm going to read from. But you can see here there is a little red um, app button. And if you press there, I'm just going to close. You browse through the different issues of the Spiritus magazine. And you can probably see the reflection on my computer. Very easily, very beautiful, very well done, inspired by the good spirit. There's a lot of work that goes into being to the point that we have these beautiful teachings. And many of them for the first time in English here in the Spiritist magazine. And this is how beautiful it is. The latest um, article of this, the latest issue of the Spiritist magazine, issue 50. After 12 years, we have 50 issues of the Spiritist magazine. And can you believe free of charge for all of us? So we can go there, we can browse, we can find different articles. And I'm going to read it to you. And we're going to make some comments because this is more of a warning than anything. This article that we're going to talk today, as you saw in the beginning, is titled The Work of the Gospel. Look how beautiful. And it's by the Spirit Bittenko Sampaio through the medium. Chico Xavier, and as always, we are very um, thankful for the presence of the good spirits around us and for all of those who dedicated their lives to bring to you and I the consoling words of spiritism, that if it weren't for them, we may not be here today. All right, and Biteku Sampaio wrote this article, and it was published in the Spiritist magazine, uh, o Reformador, in 1976, was year 94. Can you believe that was 94 years back in 1976? And it would be the Reformer in English. So every now and then you're going to see some of those articles being translated and presented to us firsthand in English by the Spiritist magazine. So I'm going to read to you to demonstrate how easy it is. And even in this, in this article you have, I'm not sure if it's going to be that beautiful, but it will be, I invite you to go there. You can see him. He is the one holding the baby here, this frame. There, yeah, there you go. And then I invite you to go there, the spiritusmagazine.org. You can purchase the physical copy. You can download the PDF or you can download the app. It only takes a few minutes and you will be able to follow it with me. And I'm going to read it to you. Many of those who currently dedicate the scientific postulates of spiritism to this um, condemn scholars of moral and religious conclusions to which the spiritist doctrine inevitably leads with its phenomenal expressions. We observe subtle movements tending to nullify the action of the gospel, eliminating the religious and consoling features of the spiritist doctrine that a new science be created on the cement of spiritus phenomena, that this meta, meta psych, metaphysic be explained with its compendiums of complicated terminology is natural, but it is unacceptable to forget that modern spiritism has to be the confirmation of Christianity in its primitive purity, restoring the collective forces for the practice of the good. Earthly sciences have a relative value in the face of the transcendent laws that govern the mechanism of destinies. The physical man has reached evolutionary heights, but the moral man resent, uh, presents serious gaps and great defects. For the first, the earth is full of new amenities and effective treatments. For the second, however, there is only one path of progress, that of true Christian institute. Today, the solution to the crisis that overwhelm humans is exact, the exact understanding of the gospel. From a mundane point of view, the criterion of civilization or culture does not solve the serious puzzles that concern the general mentality. Because, morally speaking, humankind is full of needs. Even today, Christ's message is obscure and unknown in the environment of almost all nationalities, despite churches of all kinds, isolated from the true characteristics of Christianity. Many peoples are waiting for the master's word to bring their laws closer to the code of fraternity and love. In the realm of spiritual things, human beings 
will oscillate between civilization and bar bar barbarianism. Hence the conclusion of the need to clarify human understanding regarding the divine duties. All programs of spiritualist, spiritualistic ideas must be based on the improvement of humanity. Spiritism will have to revive Christianity or it will have to perish. Its scientific questions are necessary accessories for its evolution as a doctrine, but they do not mean its essential vitality. Those misrepresenting the work of the gospel, calling it useless and unreasonable, do not comprehend the great truths of life, striped of the sense of current realities. It is necessary for a spiritist to be convinced that all doctor, doctrinal work without the help of the moral part of spiritism will pass like a meteor. If in your habitual activities you have seen countless organizations labeled with our consoling faith fail, such disasters are the fruit of unjustifiable thoughtlessness. Before creating spiritists aware of their duties of fraternity, humidity and love, you have raised spiritist works, empty of enlightened conscience, unable to guide them in the labyrinth of modern activities. To create institutions without tuning the minds that will guide them in the environments of the community, according to their sacred goals, is halfway to their own bankruptcy. Convince yourself that the present needs the common effort of all under the flag of tolerance and unification to spread the gospel lesson throughout the planet. Before brains, hearts must be enlightened. If spiritism will march with Christ or deviate from its sacred goals, either humanity carries out the gospel or their civilization will have to disappear. Again, if you're joining me tonight, Welcome. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have you. I can see some of your life. It's a blessing to have you here. I hope that you can um, learn a lot from Biteku Sampaio. And if you have any questions or comments, write them down. Well, let's take a deep breath. Because I'm chatting, I'm going to seek the aid of the blessed water that we have. What a message, right? Because Bittenko Sampai was born in uh, February of 1834 and discarnated in, in October of 1895. So he, he was living in the time of Kardec, right? He was a Brazilian, he was born in the state of Sergipe in, in Brazil. He was a lawyer, a journalist, a poet, and a politician. In addition to that, he was also a spiritist medium and he was alive and he used to write prescriptions for homeopathy. And in, in light of all the works he has done, he came and brought this message from um, through the medium Chico Xavier. And we can say all the works that Chico Xavier has done. What a blessing to be known of this. So let's take a, a moment to talk about the title of this article, The Work of the Gospel. So first question for you, if you're listening to me live and on demand, what does the gospel mean to you? What is the gospel here to do, right? We have the first revelation, the Old Testament, we have the gospel, and we have the third revelation, or this uh, promise consoler of spiritism. What is the work of the gospel in your life? When was the last time you opened the gospel? When was the last time you thought about the teachings of the gospel? Not in a sense of just learning, but in a sense of applying the teachings. As we're going to say here, it's really a warning for us. He's saying a kind warning because the good spirits never admonish us without telling us what to do. And he says here, modern spiritism has to be the confirmation of Christianity. And then we have to go back and think about what is Christianity in my life? Am I one of these churches that even today allow the Christ message to be unknown because we are isolated from the true characteristics of Christianity? But in, in terms of what did the Christ came here to say? What, is the, what are the teachings of the gospel aside from knowing the 
you know, the, the apostles, the books and the verses, which is all valid and important. Remember, if we learn this now and we get to the spiritual realm, we would have it in our memory. And until we are able and allowed to have enough credit to access books and libraries, it will be in our mind. So that is very noble to know of it. But most more important, what do those teachings do in my life? What kind of teaching do I want to extract from it? What did Christ bring to us by making the sacrifice of coming to our planet to teach us firsthand the teachings of, uh, of the gospel, right? So we always need to think about the work of the gospel as Bitiku Sapai is, is bringing to us. He's saying here, the physical man has reached evolutionary heights, but the moral man presents serious gaps and great defects. So the earth is full of amenities and effective treatments for the physical man. However, for the second, for the moral man, is a path of progress. Let's think through this because you and I are here, this beautiful heights of technology that connect us, even though we're not able to congregate in one space we're still able to be connected and receiving the consoling works of spiritism and other consoling works of, of the good throughout humanity. Yet, we look outside, actually, let's look within, there's still a lot of that our moral man needs to work on. And he goes, this, this is a beautiful issue that is much needed during the times of pandemic. And I ask you, think about the work of the gospel in your life, Think about your physical reality and all the beautiful things we have in terms of the heights of technology and medicine. Remember, we are dealing with uh, a pandemic and we have a lot of medical technologies today that previous pandemics didn't have. What is the moral man that is inside of me or woman inside of me still in need of work? And we can look outside in the community and see everything that is happening all around us in terms of discrimination, uh, intolerance, violence, cruelty, hunger, and disease. So see the paradox? And this goes straight with the teachings of spiritism in the, in the spirits book, question 100, the hierarchy of spirits. And then we have the knowledge that we, we, we evolve morally and we evolve intellectually. And by using our intelligence and applying it to our physical environment, we can improve and reach those heights of technology. Yet we still, a lot of us are still lacking a lot of within our moral men and the things we have to do. And he says, the solution to all of the crisis that overwhelm humans is an exact understanding of the gospel. And that's why I, I welcomed you, I invited you to think about, and I'm, I'm, I'm the first one to hear my own words, so I'm also thinking, what is the work of the gospel in my life? The previous week, week and even after, we talked about spiritual acquisitions. We talked about being our decision to follow the good or to follow ignorance or evil. So it's my decision, it's your decision to jump into the bag bang the wagon of progress and go with the train of progress. He's saying the solution to all of the crises that overwhelm us in the understanding of the gospel. Let's think about Jesus and the gospel. All of, if you read the, the New Testament, if you read the gospel according to spiritism, and if you read good news, there is a study uh, of the book Good News in English here at Kardec Radio. Go to kardecradio.com, go to podcasts. You're going to see it there. And also the book, Jesus in the Home. Jesus was kind. Jesus was tolerant. Jesus helped everybody. Jesus did not attach himself to titles. He did not exclude anybody, anyone. He was always working. He was always serving, regardless of where he was all the time. And that's part of the meaning of the gospel in our lives. So let's extract from multimillionary existence is all the knowledge that we have acquired. Let's cherish all the moral progress that you and I and everyone around us has done. And then let's go one step further and ask ourselves, what else can I do? 
And each and every time you come to in, in contact with someone in your life, think mentally. If they're loved ones, you can say that to them. How can I love you more? But if they're just a stranger, send them good loves and vibration and see them as a child of God that is also in the path of progress with you and I. Imagine if we had this understanding of the gospel and then we wouldn't be overwhelmed with all the crises that we have. Moral crisis, spiritual crisis, psychological crisis. Not any other civilization probably has as much technological advancement as you and I can experience today in these times in 2020. Yet, yet we still have a lot of moral shortcomings. Exactly, he's talking about the moral man presents serious gaps and great defects. 2,000 years ago, Christ came to show us how we can solve and we can fill in the gaps and ultimately comes down to love and charity, loving one another. Ooh, I'll take a deep breath. And he says here, hence the conclusion of the need to clarify human understanding regarding their divine duty. So he presented the case and he said, now I need to come to you. That's why I came to you, to clarify your divine duties. Did you know, friends, that you have divine duties? That there, you have duties or things that you have to do that are only assigned to you, but nobody else. I can do, nobody else can do. It's the work of your lifetime that God assigned to you, that God created you and assigned you a task, and you and I are here to fulfill that task, and those are our divine duties. So think about it. How is the gospel working in my life? How am I working the gospel into my life, and how can I use that gospel knowledge to feel the teachings, just as Jesus said to Nicodemus in the book, The Good News, feel it, not just know, but feel it and actually apply it. And the reason all the messages I'm bringing you different things that tie it up, because the spirits are kindly bringing it to us over and over again. It is exactly how you, I used to teach students in college, and you repeat, and you study again, and you repeat, you do one more exercise until you get it. And until this, in this lifetime, this is our final exam. For millennia, we've been ignoring the teachings of the gospel and not working the gospel into our lives. And today you and I are here. This is the final exam, the tra planetary transition. is the time that you're going to be asked to move along or maybe invited to reincarnate somewhere else in a different place without the knowledge of spiritism and even without the physical comforts that we have. So we have to be very kind, very conscientious to tell ourselves, yes, I may be imperfect, but I'm perfectible. I may be still have shortcomings, but I've come a long way already. 2,000 years ago, you were a different person. You're a different spirit and different levels of evolution. Today you're better and tomorrow you're going to be better and the day after and the day after. And then he comes to talk to us about how we should do, we should incorporate the teachings of the gospel into our spiritist movement. He says all programs of spiritualist, spiritualistic ideas must be based in the improvement of humanity. Spiritism will have to revive Christianity or perish because we don't want to be like these churches, he says, even today, that was in 1970, Christ's message is obscure and unknown in the environment of almost all nationalities, despite churches of all kinds, isolated from the true characteristics of Christianity. So when you and I are doing the spiritist work, more than coming here and talking about it and doing it, we have to really tell people about Christ's message and how do we do that through example and he's saying how should we be doing should create spiritists aware of their duties of fraternity humility and love and not just be doing works that are in light empty of enlightened consciences and there's nothing wrong with doing spiritist works that are noble we should be charitable and we should give all of ourselves to others. 
But if we have the means, we need to help our brothers and sisters in need. They don't have, it may be physical charity. It may be giving someone something, maybe donating, maybe skipping your latte once a week and donating that money to Fraternity Without Borders, for example, is a very simple example. But if sometimes we're not able to do the physical and we'll be physically separated. Let's say, for example, if within your family, you can't visit your loved ones because you need to socially distance and wear a mask. So the pandemic can go undergo and stay under control. It's our duty to be my, kind to everybody, right? be respectful of everybody, not want to spread it. So let's say you can't go, but you know that your family member is suffering. What if you pray for them? few times a day what if you did a text message that is video message it takes as many as long to type it in than to actually make a video a video message that is not filtered instagram messages that i'm talking about i'm talking about sincere call did you know someone who just passed away from covid call them leave them in a whatsapp message just say hey i was thinking about you we are here in this together. I love you. I hope you're well. That's all you need to do. But then we can combine the physical and use these enlightened technologies that we have to put them to work and relieve the suffering around us. And then we do uh, moral charity. We do invisible charity, which is sometimes saying to someone, hello, good morning, acknowledging their existence. Just smiling at them. Now with masks, it's a little harder to do, but you can still smile. They can probably still see the, your eye wrinkles. But then maybe if you're going to the grocery store, pray for the cashier, pray for the people who are restocking the shelves. So I'm bringing the work of the gospel to your life because Jesus would have done that. He did it. Just if you go to look at the gospel, he always, he reached for the, this disabled, he reached for the sick. He said, the healthy do not need a doctor, right? So we need to be mindful and be stern. This is a stern message to you and I, especially in the Spiritist movement as the promised consoler so that we can bring relief to everybody. And doing this kind of work that you're spending here, almost half an hour with me, maybe a little longer, all of the other programs of Kardec Radio. Sometimes you're at home, you have to clean your house, put it on, put the, the, the playlists. Every Spirit Society these days has a YouTube channel or Facebook page. Play it because then the spirits around you are going to have to listen to the, to the talk with you. Pray for those who, if you feel and see them, pray for them. And that's the most um, effective way of helping that it may not entirely you know, may not mean that you're going to go somewhere and see someone and give them physical, but there are people all over the world who are doing works. And then we need to support that as well the, to the best we can. We are asked to reprioritize what's important to us, right? And he says here, convince yourself that the present needs the common effort of all so all of us are important as i said we have our divine duties we have our divine work on tuesday mornings we have here cardiac radio another another first um first time in english book that i do it's called the right path and the next chapter and next tuesday morning talks about work talks about the specific task that you and I are assigned by God, that non-transferable. So here it is. We need this common effort of all. Everybody matters. So tell them, tell your loved ones, you matter. Stay here. Let's fight this together. Under the flag of tolerance and unification to spread the gospel lesson throughout the planet. So the, the message will arrive. Do you want to be the ones who are helping to spread or do we want to be stagnated and have to do it again another time? We want to do it now. We want to do it today. And part of doing this is to be courageous to spread the good. Share, like, subscribe, follow, whatever the language is for whatever social media you use. Make sure you tell other people about this. It doesn't mean you're going to convert anybody. It just means you're sharing. And it may reach them at a point where they need. You may save a life. You may help someone feel consoled and helped. He says here, before brains, 
hearts must be enlightened. Just as Jesus said to Nicodemus in the book of News, you've studied, we've studied, we know a lot, now it's time to feel it. Let's enlighten our hearts to feel ourselves as children of God with a unique divine duty that we have to um, fulfill. And then with that knowledge, you know that you are important, that your loved ones are important, that everybody of the 7 billion incarnates on this earth are important. Not talking about the discarnate friends that are with us as well. They are also important. And then visualizing yourself as one of the pieces of the puzzle, working together under the guidance of the good spirits. They're guided by our master Jesus. We will reach this state of enlightenment of our hearts. Now, I'm going to invite you. If you have any questions and comments, this is your time. I'm going to invite you to join me on a prayer so we can do our final prayer. I hope this was helpful to you. And we are also going to pray towards the end. Everything seems to be working as planned with the blessings of God. I'm just going to check real quick to make sure we are still live and nobody is missing because we are spreading this all over the place. So it's very important that we are here. All right, dear friends, if you're joining me now, I'm going to invite you for a prayer of gratitude. As always, we say, if you can, close your eyes just for a few moments of deep inner focus and reflection. And then we repeat the words of the prayer. We recommend that you repeat the words of the prayer, whatever you were play you're praying, so that we can be together. And we can remember thought is life. Every time you pray, it matters the intensity of your thought and the intensity of the feelings that you put in your prayer. So if we're all praying together, we're all repeating the same words with conviction and love, it spreads out to the whole universe. Have your bottle of water with you. Have a bottle of water next time for all your family members so everybody can benefit. Shall we? Dear Mother, Father God, we thank you for the opportunity of serving you. We thank you for the blessed incarnation that you have granted us. We thank you for all the opportunities of service and for all the teachings that we receive each and every day for all the help that we receive from our incarnate friends and from our discarnate friends and all of the obstacles they remove and the inspiration they give us. We are truly indebted to them who love us unconditionally and are with us each and every day during this lifetime. Dear God, we thank the good spirits that inspire the editors of the magazine and all of the authors of the articles and the mediums who sacrifice their lives and their time and service in service of the good to bring us these consoling teachings. Dear God, we pray that your love and your light descend upon us as showers of healing, consoling light, harmonizing ourselves, calming our hearts, calming our minds. We hope that you are able to guide us and that you are able to send your good spirits to inspire us. We pray for our loved ones, both near and far. We pray for all of those who touch our lives, our friends, our co-workers, the strangers we are not aware of that make our life easier. We pray for all of the brothers and sisters in humanity. Together, we hope to be able to open our hearts to hear your call. We hope that we are able to fulfill your mission for us on this planet. We pray that we are able to hear your call. Dear God, may you bless all of those 
who are in need of help in this world. May your consoling messengers inspire us, strengthen us, bringing us the knowledge that we are loved and we are cared for by you, that we are all children of God, progressing together on this earth. May your blessings be bestowed upon us and with your permission, asking for your protection and inspiration throughout the day or night, we end our studies today. And so be it. Dear friends, thank you very much for joining me. I see some shy friends here who haven't said yes, but that's totally fine. If you're joining me live, my love for you, I hope that you have a wonderful evening. I'm broadcasting um, from the eastern part of the United States, so I am on 8 p.m., but if you're seeing this recorded, fewer your love, fewer your connection, don't, don't forget to visit spiritismagazine.org, or you can read a, leave a comment for us here at our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, both Kardec and the Spiritist Magazine. We monitor and we'll, we'll be able to answer you. And until next time, I hope that you can join me again for another Spiritist Magazine program next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Many blessings and have a wonderful evening, dear friends. Bye-bye.